Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good day. First of all, it is my pleasure to be a moderator for today's session. My name is Hairun Nisa Binti Hairuddin. I am a lecturer from the Faculty of Applied and Human Sciences, University Malaysia Perlis. On behalf of the organizer, we would like to extend our warm welcome to all students, lecturers, foreign and local participants to this session. Today's webinar is organized by the Faculty of Applied and Human Sciences Unimap in order to expose the undergraduate student to do their research for final year project paper. Ladies and gentlemen, today's topic is the most crucial part in research. As a researcher, we start our research by identifying research problem. Said Hussein al Atas, a prominent scholar in sociology, he stated that it is the nature of the problem which determines the method of the study. My mentor said to me, the value of any thesis is really encapsulated in two pages, one page on the problem statement and one page on the conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, to begin with, I would like to invite Dean of the Faculty of Applied and Human Sciences Unimap, Associate Professor Ku Halim bin Ku Arifin to deliver his welcome speech. So, Prof, please welcome. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <coughs> Salam sejahtera to all students, final year students, and also participants joining this uh, lecture this afternoon. I would like to thank you to Dr. Shahidan and also Dr. Karunisa for the for organizing this uh, lecture series uh, this afternoon, and uh, also to Prof. Professor Aminul Islam will be your instructor or be your your uh, lecturer this uh, afternoon that will deliver to you the very important uh, topics so that by having this uh, topic this afternoon hopefully all funny year students all fyp students have uh, benefits have uh, uh, information have an idea and also knowledge to begin or to continue your writing on the final year projects for final year student for fyp student inshallah i really hope that you put an effort to follow this lecture and try to have uh, try to gain as much as you can knowledge from uh, prof amino today and also if you have any uh, difficulties if you have any question please don't hesitate to uh, further the question to prof aminol hoping that at the end of the day our lecture this afternoon is a uh, benefit to all of you thank you very much dr aminol uh, prof aminol dr karunisa dr shahidan and also to all of you joining us uh, this afternoon. Assalamualaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, as mentioned by uh, Prof. Uh, Tu Halim just now, okay, I am honored to introduce our webinar speaker today, Prof. Dr. Aminul Islam. He is currently a professor at the Faculty of Applied and Human Sciences, UNIMAP. His specialization is in the field of finance. 
he is actively involved in numerous webinars related to research methodology. Without further ado, I would like to invite the Honorable Prof. Dr. Aminul Islam to deliver his lecture. Please welcome, Prof. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, our our honourable dean, uh, Professor Kualim Kuarifin, for um, saying few words uh, to this webinar. Uh, it was very nice of him. Uh, he had a meeting, and then again uh, he took uh, a short break and and joined us uh, for a short uh, while. And then I would like to uh, also uh, thank uh, the organizer, especially Dr. Khairun Nisa and Dr. Shahidan for organizing this event and giving us the opportunity or giving me the opportunity to share uh, some of my uh, learnings uh, with uh, you all, those of you attending. As I understood that there'll be also participants from a few other countries, many other countries. Uh, I used to have participants from more than 30 countries in most of my webinars. So those of you who are in the morning, so good morning and uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, uh, according to your time, all right? Uh, today's session is uh, uh, very special in the sense that uh, the talk would be catered uh, to the beginners, right? <laughs> to the beginners. Uh, that's how you put the word uh, pro research problem and introduction, okay? So it's basically geared to uh, students uh, doing undergraduate or postgraduate studies or even doing PhD at the beginning. Okay, for them is going to be uh, very useful, inshallah. <clears throat> uh, let me introduce with you also the other person. Basil, you have uh, Dr. Khairun Nisa as moderator, and then we have also our brother Maru Hassan, uh, who is our PhD scholar of University of Malaysia Police, and he's working as an assistant professor at University Dafudil International University, Bangladesh. Uh, all right, uh, thank you, brother Maru and uh, Dr. Nisa. Uh, well, uh, uh, let me explain to you before of the session how we are going to conduct it today. I'm going to discuss on research problem for you, and after that, uh, I will give you the link towards the end of the session, uh, so we can accommodate seven students at a time. You can come on the screen, so we'll share the link with you. With that link, you will come to the screen, and if you have any question, basically, you will come to the screen and you will ask question live. Uh, beside that, if you feel shy of uh, coming to the screen and asking question. Uh, you can always put the question on uh, the chat box where you are now saying good afternoon and all that. You can put your question there. And Dr. Khairun Nisa will take up uh, those question and uh, she will put forward to me after the session, uh, after the deliberation, then we'll have question and answer sessions. So give me a few seconds to share my screen with you. Um, Okay, just, just wait for a while, the, it's, it's coming. Can you see my uh, screen now, Brother Maru? Is it on now? Yes, Prof, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you, thank you. So I proceed. All right, so that is the title for uh, today's talk. This is problem and introduction. That's uh, how we uh, have decided, okay, introducing a very important topic for a research. Albert Einstein, he said the formulation of the problem is often more essential than its solution, okay, because the solution is dependent on the problem that we have identified. And I always give simple example for understanding of the issue. Uh, if you are not feeling well and uh, you go and see the doctor, uh, the first thing what is very important for a doctor is to diagnose the disease. If he has diagnosed the disease correctly, then he will give you or prescribe you the right medicine. If the doctor is wrong in diagnosing the disease, then he will end up giving you the wrong medication. And rather than you are getting healthy, he will suffer more with the disease, okay? <clears throat> so even in research, it all starts with 
formulation, identification, definition, and formulation of research problem. Okay, if we define it correctly, then the rest of the processes would follow suit. Um, research is basically a voice of journey, uh, a voice of discovery and attitude and experience, a method of critical thinking, or a careful inquiry of uh, you know, in seeking facts from principles. Uh, this is something I really love, the definition of research. Research is a voice of discovery. It is a journey. Um, for an example, if you are traveling somewhere, uh, we simply do not get up and we start traveling, uh, right? So before uh, we travel, we got to plan many things. We got to decide uh, how are we going to do the journey, right? Uh, is it going to be by uh, flying? Are you going to take a bus? Uh, we are going to take a train? Uh, we are going to drive by ourselves? We are riding a bike? You know, but there are so many different methods are there. We have to decide on one. In research, is also like that. We have many different methods available. Quantitative method, qualitative method. We have different uh, research design. We talk about reporting, predictive, exploratory, explanatory, descriptive, all kind of research design also there. You know, so depending on the kind of journey, we decide what kind of mode of journey we are going to take. It's the same for research. Depending on the problem that we have identified, we will decide uh, what kind of method we are going to take it. You know, that's how it is. So before you even start the journey, uh, before night, what we, we may do is we may pack our luggage and baggage, right? Depending on how long the journey is going to be and depending on how long we are going to stay in the place. So. Depending on that, we prepare our luggage. We take our clothes, uh, some food, some medicine, whatever, all that we take. In research, it's also like that. You cannot start a research just, uh, you know, I want to do a research and you just start. It's not like that. We have to also pack up certain things before we start our research journey. Possibly, we have to brush up our English language because most of the papers are written in English. That is also part of packaging, okay? Possibly, we may have to read certain uh, uh, information you have to collect and go through, review it before we decide on our journey, research journey. Like before we travel, we uh, do little, uh, uh, you know, uh, information collection. If you go by flight, what are the things I have to go through? If I go by bus, then I have to buy a ticket and what I have to take it with me, how long is it going to take? If I drive, then what are the ways we are going? I have to make sure my car is, uh, is fit. I am fit to uh, uh, drive the car. The car has uh, the fuel and all sort of things that you look at, you know, it's very important. So in a research, it is a journey. Uh, that's the definition I say I love because it is similar to a journey. You have to plan earlier. And when you start a journey, on the journey, there many things can happen. You may fall in accident. You may get into traffic jam. Uh, you may see certain things, you know, uh, beside while you are journeying, you know, right and left and in front and back. You can see many things happening. In the research also, that will happen. You see the society, you see the people, you meet uh, uh, students, you meet researchers, you meet your academics. And you see many different things and different kind of ideas come in. And from there, you have to uh, work out your journey in a research. Okay. Now, um, in a bookish definition, we say uh, research is an art of scientific investigation. So you are scientific and uh, systematic search for pertaining, pertinent information for a specific topic. Okay. Um, this is more... Uh, precise and uh, very good uh, uh, comprehensive definition of research. So we say research is an organized, objective, systematic process to study a particular problem that needs a solution. So this way we have to be very careful, okay? So we have to have a problem in hand first. We have to identify a problem, the problem that is troubling the society or industry, a problem that become a concern for industry or society or a nation or the world at large. So there's something got to be uh, there, you know. So based on that problem, then we follow through and we have to follow organized, systematic and objective process uh, to find a solution to that uh, problem. Um, I will again explain a bit more afterwards. So research is basically we define that we are searching again, like research, searching again. Uh, research is basically to search for a new idea, uh, research is basically to search for new answers to an old question, right? We, as we look at now, COVID-19, uh, this kind of virus is not first in the in the world. We had it before, and now yet we have uh, a new uh, COVID. Uh, but uh, the question is old. We used to have that kind of virus before, and but we don't have any 
uh, medication until now for it, right? The vaccination is underway, all right? So, and then we also question existing answer to a question and search for new answers. There could be some answers available to a question, but that question may not su be sufficient. And you've got to do research to find out the answers, uh, new answers for the question. We have many illness now, right, with people. Uh, and uh, some answers uh, of those illness is there. But sometimes we see that, that, that those medications are not enough and we need new uh, medicines there. For example, if you look at gastritis, those people have gastritis. And now we are on the fifth generation of uh, medicine, esomeprazole, that people use. But before that, they, they have omeprazole and pantropazole. There are many different generations are there. So the gastritis problems are there, answers are there, but still that answer is not enough. So you got to find new medication to solve that problem. So that's what we're saying. We are doing research to question the existing answer, and then we are finding new answers to uh, uh, the existing question. Why we do research? We do research because social realities evolve and change. The society is going through tremendous changes, right? We see the way we live, the way we eat, the way we talk to people, the way we uh, work in the office uh, keep changing. And with COVID-19, things have dramatically changed, right? Uh, most of us, we are attending class online. Like now, I'm giving lecture uh, online <laughs> with the webinar. If COVID was not there, we would have got it uh, physically, right? So those things are changing. Uh, we are attending online classes, doing assignment online, uh, doing final exam, midterm exam online. Those were unthinkable five years before, even one year back. Okay. And um, there are many things. Uh, I'll just give you an example. The society, uh, uh, things are changing. Even if you look at uh, divorce rate in uh, many countries, including Malaysia, is about 35%. But at our father and mother time before, you know, uh, 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 30 years back, the divorce rate was like 5% or even 2-3%, you know. So things are changing. And it has a lot of implication to the society. And uh, with the fourth industrial revolution, we see new technologies are coming up, right? Uh, with cloud computing, internet of things uh, uh, for business students, financial technology or fintech, crowdfunding, and many new things are evolving. And those are changing our lives. So when things uh, uh, change in the society, in the industry, in the nation or world, uh, that will uh, require definitely to conduct re research so that we have findings, outcomes to solve uh, those issues. Okay, because the ideas and evolve ideas evolve and change. So research is done because even the ideas become obsolete, and you need uh, new ideas to come in. And from ideas, we continue to concept, and then we develop a new theory. Okay, so ideas keep changing. The way we lead our life, especially now, you see. Uh, if you look at 20 years back, uh, people to eat uh, at home, uh, uh, more comfortable at home, you know. But now you see, um, most people, they love to go out and having their dinner or lunch outside. Okay? So uh, when, when that happened and then suddenly COVID came in. So what happened? Even you cannot go out and you are not really, you know, very used to cooking at home. So what do you do? You have now food panda. You just call them, you know, and then you just drive through. You just go to McDonald's or KFC. You don't have to come out from the car. So that kind of ideas, new ideas and things are coming, right? Because of social reality changes, business also got to have new ideas and, and changes in mind, okay? And also, um, when solutions are there, uh, but those solutions are contestable, right? I have given a few examples of it. Uh, certain problems have solutions, but those solutions are not sufficient. And those solutions become outdated. So we have to conduct research to come out with updated solutions to the existing problem. Uh, let me also talk on some uh, uh, very important area in research. Uh, we do have misunderstanding of what is uh, research and what is not research, okay? Uh, for some of us, we believe that just collecting facts and information without any clear purpose is a research, uh, which is not. Huh? If you just collect research without any objective and we just describe them, uh, then, then that is not really research. Because earlier we defined research as a systematic objective process of collecting data to solve a research problem. So there must be clear cut objective and purpose before we do research. So if you collect some data and facts without any purpose, and we feel that this would be helpful for that, and I'm saying that I've done a research on it, which is not right. Reassembling and reordering facts and information without interpretation, which is also not research. Um, I have to stress on this point. Uh, one of the weakest points that we find among uh, our students' uh, PhD or master or final year project draft 
is they will collect data and they will do analysis using certain statistical methods and they will just present it without interpretation. That is very common, okay? So collecting data and uh, we just reassemble them and reorder them and presenting it is also not a research, okay? You have to have interpretation on the findings that you have, which is very important. So when you write your chapter four and five, that's where you have to focus a lot. Uh, what an, uh, a reader wants to see it, when you have information collected, facts collected, you analyze it with certain statistical method, we'd like to see how we interpret and contextualize it. How do you relate with the issues that is being identified with the research problem? So you are showing its issues and then how your findings are solving those issues and finally tackle the problem that you have identified, which is very important. Number three, uh, research, if it is an esoteric activity with no or little relevance to everybody's life, then it is not a research. What does it mean? Esoteric activity meaning that we conducted research with basically benefits very few people, only a small segment of population, then also it is not considered research. Research got to be benefiting a lot of people, okay? A lot of citizens of a country, a lot of industry or employees in the industry, okay? Uh, so research has to be like that. So when you define the scope of research, you have to make sure that your findings is going to be helpful uh, for a good portion of society, of people, okay? And number four, uh, especially for marketing people, Sometimes what we do, we try to get our ideas or products to be noticed and respected and we create the advertisement or promotion for that and we say this is a research. That is not also a research. That's basically advertising or promotion activities, okay? So that's not a research. Now, uh, the component of uh, an empirical research, uh, this is the, these are the stages that every one of you will be going through. And uh, definitely the first thing you need to have is the research problem, the problem is statement. From problem statement, we will then uh, translate or transform them into specific research questions and research objectives, okay? Um, and then we'll followed by literature review and then theoretical framework and uh, so on, okay? So basically, uh, typically we'll have five uh, chapters in a research report. We start with introduction, followed by literature review, followed by theoretical framework and uh, research methodology. And then your fourth chapter would be like findings of your, uh, uh, study and then finally your conclusion and recommendations right so it all start with uh, research problem now um, let me answer another question that i used to get and we see a student uh, will always uh, be wondering which one to do first should i write research problem first or should i do literature review first okay uh, of course you have to do literature review first you have to understand what is happening, what has been done by previous researchers and what the current researchers are doing, okay? And then you will connect it with the industry where the problem is rooted, all right? So you have to do literature review first, okay? And then you have to get a whole of the area, understanding the research problem that in hand. And from there only, you will come back and write research problem. If you insist on writing research problem first before reading, papers or doing literature review, we will be struggling a lot. Huh? For example, for my PhD, I try to read the research problem uh, first to write it. And you know how many times I wrote? I remember I counted. I wrote 17 times to convince my professor of the research problem. Because every time I read a new paper, my idea changes, you know, and then I'll come and change my research problem. And I read more papers again, I got new ideas. Then I come back and do the correction again. So why should you be doing that? you should rather do the literature review first. So that's the chapter you should be doing first. So you should do write chapter two first. And after that, you come back and write chapter one. That will make your life more comfortable and easier. So this is how it starts, right? Uh, with the title, it, it follows through by um, research problem. Then we have research question, objective, and later we will have synchronization. Research problem would be translated into research question. And those research questions would be transformed or translated or reflected into the research hypothesis later on. Now, uh, this is uh, an analogy that I am proposing to the world. And uh, I have applied uh, this for patenting. And uh, it seems like the whole world is appreciating this uh, tree analogy. What I'm doing here is I'm comparing research with the tree. 
And this slide, please understand it very well. It will make many things clear uh, to you. Okay, you will clarify many doubts uh, and questions that you have in mind when you start doing research. If you look at a tree, the most important part of a tree are the roots. If there are no roots, there's not a tree, right? If there's no root, there's not a tree. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, the roots got to be very strong. If it is very strong, the tree will be grown bigger and it can stand, okay? Even a strong wind cannot make it fall. So the root got to be strong. And also, if a tree bears bigger side fruits, a lot of fruits become heavy to carry, right? That kind of uh, a tree also, the root got to be strong, okay? So if there's no root, there's no tree. In research, it's like that. If there's no research problem, there's no research, okay? I hope you're following me. So as we defined earlier, research is basically what? To solve a problem. If there's no problem, there's no research, okay? So same goes to a tree. There's no root, there's no tree. There's no research problem, there's no research. Now, um, after that, you look at the tree. Uh, the beautification of the tree is dependent on the color of the leaves and how many leaves you have. If you have a strong tree but no leaves, it doesn't look to be very beautiful, right? So a tree with a lot of leaves and greener looks very beautiful, okay? So that's what I compare with literature review. When something is wrong with the tree, the first thing you can notice is the leaves. The leaves get yellow color or a different color and leaves start falling from the tree. So from there, you know, there's something wrong with the tree, okay? So if you try to solve the problem with the leaves by spraying some medicine, all that, it may not solve the problem because the problem comes from the root of the tree, okay? So you have to go back to the root of the tree. Maybe uh, the tree is not having enough water. Maybe the tree is not having enough fertilization. Maybe the soil of the tree is not proper, you know, in, in, in that case. Or maybe the environment is not proper for that tree to grow, okay? So the problem in the literature that you see, basically it reflected on the research problem, okay? So if leaves are showing some problem, we have to go back to the root of the tree. So when you do literature review and you identify the literature gap, and if you say, this is my research problem, it is not right, okay? So I'm giving the answer of a question. Many participants ask me, is literature gap same as research problem? Then I would always answer, say, no. If I say yes, I say yes, but partly yes, okay? Uh, it gives you a little because it gives you the indication of the problem, okay? So literature gap is part of the problem, but the main problem lies on the root of the tree, okay? So that's what is very important. When you do research, academic research, most of us, we do literature review and we identify the literature gap and we try to portray that as a research problem, which is not right. So once you do literature review and we identify the gap, then we have to go back to the industry where the problem is rooted, okay? Say, for example, you have done a literature review and you found that students are really not satisfied with online teaching, okay? Then you have to go back to the school, to the university, to the colleges where you are taught. Okay, so you have to see how teachers are teaching you in online. What kind of modes are being used? What kind of platform is being used? Are they used different modes of teaching or just delivering one way? And so there are many things to look at. That one, you have to go back to the university or school where you are being taught online. So just identifying literature gap is not a research problem. So you have to have supporting data from where the problem occurs, that is the root of the problem, okay? So that is your literature review. And then I compare the theoretical framework with the tree of the research, sorry, the body of the research. So a tree, the body got to be strong. If the root is strong, the body is weak, the tree will not survive, okay? So what do you need? You need a framework, very strong framework for your research. That's what you will do. I hope in the next talk, uh, the, uh, we'll have theoretical framework uh, talk series and uh, you will understand more on theoretical framework, inshallah, okay? So theoretical framework become nucleus of your research. That become the body of the tree. And all research, especially social science, got to be underpinned or supported by certain theories. And I put the branches of a theory are, are the tree are the theories, okay? So the branches of the trees are... Basically, you know, the, where you will have more leaves and 
the fruits to bear. So your uh, branches got to be stronger. So you need a strong theory or you need strong theories to support your theoretical framework. And then finally, uh, we look at the outcome. Uh, outcome of a research is same as uh, the fruits of a tree. Uh, if you plant a tree and the tree doesn't give you any fruits, definitely you won't like it. You will just chop up the tree. <laughs> Whether the tree is good or not, uh, it, depended, it is dependent on uh, the fruits that you get. Uh, possibly, uh, you want to get more fruits. You want to see uh, bigger size fruits. You want to get nutritious fruits. So, so that's all are the uh, outcomes of a tree that we plant. Now, uh, in our research, basically the tree is already there. We will not start from zero. The tree is already there because most of us, we do uh, deductive research in social science. As we have theoretical framework, we collect data and all that because we follow quantitative research uh, design. Okay. So the fruits, basically the tree is there. The tree even gives the fruits because everything that you do in social science research, you've got to have citation references. Then the question would be then, how can I find something new? Okay. So what we want you to do is, we do not want you to produce uh, apple uh, from an orange tree, or we do not want you to produce orange from an apple tree. We want an apple tree from an apple, uh, apple from an apple tree, but maybe the apple size got to be bigger. With your new research, you find something, you extend the theory, or possibly you got uh, more uh, apple in a tree than compared to the other trees, okay? So that is a contribution, or possibly you, your tree, the apples are no more nutritious, more uh, tasty, okay, compared to the other trees. That is also a contribution. In research, it would be like that, okay. So once you have completed research, then we'd like to see something new. Something new is there. So maybe you validate a theory or maybe verify a theory, you extend a theory, you modify a theory, you integrate theories like, uh, so those are things we can do in a research. And finally, your data should come from where? The data comes from the root of the problem, okay? So that's what I have shown you, data quality and robustness of analysis. Data comes from, or data should come from the root of the problem. If a tree is having problem, and if you see the leaves are getting yellowish, or the leaves are falling, you know something is wrong with the tree. So where do you go to collect the data, to understand what is wrong? Definitely, you go back to the root. So you give more water, you give more fertilizer and all that. So that's what I, I compare that uh, in research, the data quality, robustness of analysis, it, is, it should come from where the problem is rooted. So as I have given you an example, if something is wrong with online teaching, then we have to go back to the university and the schools where you are being taught. Okay, that's the root of the problem. And we collect data from there and we do analysis. Okay, I hope with these slides, uh, there will be many um, doubts and confusions and misunderstanding would be clarified, inshallah. Um, now, let us proceed to research problem. So, what is uh, a research problem? Research problem is an existing problem that requires solution. So, basically, you have a problem and you are looking for a solution. Say, for example, uh, in industry, it's common that there's a complaint of harassment by a senior officer. So, there is a problem. Specific areas in organization that require improvement. So say, for example, an organization where the harassment is taking place, they do have policy, but still complaint uh, uh, is there, okay? Genuine complaints are there. So you have to do a research to come out with new policies so that the harassment can be stopped, okay? Number three, theoretical and conceptual issue that needs tightening up. What is meant by harassment? So there are many different kinds of harassment there, right? Are those of you who are familiar with that? The harassment uh, may not be only physical harassment. There could be many other ways of harassing people. Okay. I know certain industry where uh, bosses, uh, once they find a beautiful staff, they will ask them to come in the office and they stop sitting and sitting. The person is not allowed to leave. <laughs> okay. That is also harassment, right? <laughs> There's also harassment. So there are many kinds of harassment definition there. So maybe you have to conduct a research to find out a true definition that is acceptable by everyone, okay? So that is the theoretical issue that we can look at. This is a question that basic researchers need to answer empirically. So now you are looking at, okay, the harassment is there, but does it affect the performance of organization? 
Does it affect the performance of the individuals? So now we are doing a research to see the impact of harassment on performance. So if we can prove by doing research that harassment does exist and it affects the performance of an organization, then people will take it very seriously. If it's not affecting the performance, then management may not take it seriously, right? So we may want to do research uh, to see whether some issues are there and that is affecting the performance of an individual and organization. Now, so research problem is basically a definite or clear expression about an area of concern. So any area of concern is taken as a research problem. Number two, their conditions need to be improved upon. So we said that policies are there on harassment, uh, but somehow the, the, the complaint is still coming. Okay, So we have to come up with some kind of improved uh, policies and regulation to stop that. A difficulty to be eliminated uh, in industry, in society, or in nation, the certain difficulties there got to be eliminated. Okay, so if you have to do a research to eliminate that kind of difficulty, then you have to do a research. Say, for example, in an organization, uh, people find it not comfortable working, so it it got something to do with the working environment of the organization. Maybe the peer relationship between employee, employees, employee, and bosses, and all that. So you may have to do a research to come out with the policy so that that difficulty can be eliminated. Uh, as well as like, uh, I know when the COVID started and we started with lockdown and we, we were barred to coming to the office, then how do we give you attendance? Uh, so we have now with uh, uh, the location detection technology. Now, even for example, at Unimap, we give attendance using our handphone and uh, computer from home. So that was a difficulty, you know, we couldn't get attendance. So we eliminated that by coming out with uh, attendance system using location detection technologies, all right? Uh, and the person who introduced it, definitely he had to do a lot of research to come out with that kind of solution and software, okay? And then the uh, next one is a troubling question that exists in the scholarly literature and in theory. There are theories available, uh, there are concepts available, but still uh, those theories are not enough. Uh, to, to solve the trouble, the problem that we have. So we may do a research to answer those academic concerns that we have. Uh, a question that researchers want to answer or a problem that researchers want to solve. Okay, So there might be some uh, uh, questions there in the society, there's no answer. There could be a problem which exists, but there's no answer and researchers want to solve that. Okay, so from your own intuition and all that, which I'm going to discuss more later, you identify the certain problem is there, but our certain problems are there, but the answers are not there. So we are saying it is like this is problem is like identification of a distinction before undertaking a journey. So without a problem, this cannot proceed because there's nothing to proceed to us, right? That's what I said earlier. If you've got no root of a tree, there's no tree. So for research, there's no research problem. There is no research. Okay? There is no research. We cannot do uh, anything uh, if the problem is not identified and defined correctly. So according to uh, Kalinga, a problem is an interrogative sentence or a statement that asks what relation it is between two or more variables. Okay? So now we are getting it straight now. Uh, we identify certain issues and then we will compare. You know, uh, we will test the relationship between issues or relationship between issues and the problem in hand. More precisely, we'll be learning uh, the variables that you consider for a study. This is problem basically the dependent variable, and then we'll have issues, those with independent variable, and we'll be testing the relationship of, between those uh, to solve the problem that we have. So this is problem is an area of concern where there is a gap in the knowledge base, okay, needed for professional practice to fill up that gap. So that's what I say, when you find literature gap, just finding literature gap is not enough. Uh, so we have to have a uh, connection of uh, literature gap with the practical problem, the contextual problem in hand that we see. Uh, the word was uh, defined this is problem as a situation in which we have no ready or successful response by instinct or by previous acquired habit. Okay, so we have to find uh, something new, what to do. Uh, the solution can be found out only after an investigation. 
So problem is there, and uh, somehow the situation is such without any investigation, you cannot find an answer to this. Uh, there are many answers available. Uh, definitely, uh, there are many situations that have problem are there. Uh, we cannot handle that until we do investigation into that. For example, like uh, if you find that a certain uh, organization the turnover rate is very high. And uh, when the turnover, turnover is very, uh, very high, we, we, we know that it is, it is very difficult for us to, uh, you know, just uh, by looking at it and solve it. Uh, by right, uh, we have to investigate and find out what could be some of the reasons uh, of doing that, okay? Um, there are many other definitions there which uh, I leave you, which share the slides with you. This slide will be available in uh, uh, my YouTube channel, just be, be beneath of my video. Uh, after one hour of the session, you can uh, download the slides. It is going to be uploaded there for you. Now, um, what is important for researchers from the beginning, uh, all of us will have this challenge, getting the right source of uh, you know, uh, quality information. Uh, so getting the right kind of information and data. This is very common uh, question among the students. So why do I where do I get information? You know, so if you review these research papers, uh, you will identify research gap. But how about the industrial problem? So for that, you may have to identify some other sources. Could be newspaper, could be magazine, could be some syndicated organization. Even some uh, uh, government institution, organization, and ministries may have certain data. But there are ways of uh, identifying uh, research gap through four steps. Basically, it is start with intuition. Intuition is basically our conscious, subconscious mind. Uh, the way we have been brought up, uh, the way we, uh, you know, uh, deal with people, uh, the way we live in the society, family, the way we mix around with our friends in universities, all that. It will create some kind of thinking in our mind. Uh, from there, we can realize that certain problems are there. When you try to the friends, when you interact with people in the society, you can observe that certain problems are there. That is the intuition from there you will get. And that will give you some kind of inquisitiveness in your mind of thinking what is wrong. You know, there's going to be something wrong and how should, should I solve that? So it's just you start with that, you know, some intuition of getting some kind of uh, feeling of some kind of problem, okay? So once you have that, so that is basically idea. From ideas, what you do, we have to convert the ideas into discussable topic. So what you do, you go to the next stage. Um, we consult with experienced people. Possibly some academic uh, people who have uh, done research on the area. Or could be even some industry people who are working there. So I have ideas that some problem may be. So we, I consult with uh, uh, experienced people who have gone through similar uh, process, maybe uh, have done research or maybe working in the similar area. And then we try to refine the research idea that I have. And the third stage, what do you do? You obtain a uh, few literature, you know, few research papers. And we review them and we try to understand and they some extract some information to reshape the idea that I have. So once you read few papers, you consult with people and you read few papers, uh, then definitely you can uh, proceed to uh, your third step where you can review research papers and then you can proceed on to the final stage whereby you will be consulting with people of authority. So here now you are consulting with experts. It could be academic staff, uh, expert, it could be even expert from an industry. So we are consulting with people who has expertise and authority in the area. So if you follow these four steps, it will help you to convert your research idea into a researchable topic. At the same time, it will help you to identify the research gap that you are looking at, okay? So you will identify the research gap and you will define it using these four steps, simple four steps, huh? Uh, this is a, a basically description and elaboration of each step, which I am not going to go through, as you will be having the slides, uh, so please uh, review them. I have explained it already, okay? Now, why it is so important to define this problem correctly? Uh, we said that uh, a business problem will identify is half solved. So your half solution is already there you have, if you have defined your research problem correctly. Okay, um, it's like that when you are sick and you go and see a doctor, um, if doctor, after talking to you and doing some investigation and diagnosing process, 
and it tells he tells you basically this is your problem. Uh, you will find that you are already feeling well <laughs> because you know that with this medication I'll be I'll be feeling better. I'll be okay. So once you are diagnosed correctly, then you are already half 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 sickness is already gone. Okay. So that's what uh, this is problem is. Uh, if this is problem is identified and defined correctly, then the problem is already half solved. Okay, because you know exactly what kind of data to be collected, where the data got to be collected, what kind of business problem I got to follow, what kind of business uh, approach or design I have to follow, and all sort of things can be identified if you have defined and identified your business problem correctly. Next one, we say that how the problem is framed, determine what kind of solution you are going to obtain, right? So this is understandable. Uh, so the way you frame your problem uh, will determine the kind of solution you have to get. Huh? So now, uh, with COVID-19 is around, uh, uh, we, we, we know that, um, uh, we, we, we know very well that uh, when you have a situation whereby uh, you fail to frame the problem properly, then the solution that you obtain will not be also very uh, a good solution that you are looking for, okay? Number three, the research problem drives subsequent stages of research process. So if you are uh, deriving, you know, uh, defining and defining business problem correctly, that that good definition and identifying the business problem will actually help you uh, to determine the subsequent stages of the research process. Okay. Um, and finally, this problem, uh, a proper problem definition ensures the research results will meet decision makers' objectives. So this is basically we are looking at the kind of research problem uh, that we have identified in keeping in mind of the kind of problem that we have seen, right? So as we define that this is problem is uh, uh, basically a clear uh, identification of P. without research problem, there is no research, right? And uh, this is, uh, is defined as this objective and systematic process of uh, identify problem, find solutions. So the objective is there, right? So when you have a research definition, that will definitely uh, determine uh, whether you are going to meet objective of research or not. Justification of importance of research problem. Uh, research justification will be based on what researchers have found, right? Uh, then uh, it will be based on personal and workplace uh, experiences I have explained that earlier, and also based on the experience by others who have gone through a similar thing of working in the workplace, right? I said you have to follow the four steps of converting into idea to researchable topic. So you have intuition, then you have experience, then you go to research, and finally you go to uh, the people in authority. So that three steps will help you doing that. Now, locating the research problem, as I, as I have mentioned earlier, when you look at tree analogy, uh, we say if uh, there's no root, there's no tree, right? So that's what it is. If you look at the tree, the leaves are falling or getting a different color, you know something is wrong and you have to go back to the root of the tree. So locating research is really important. You identify a literature gap by reading papers. True, but where the problem exists, it is in industry, right? Or in the society or in the country or all at large. So we have to go back to the root of the problem, locating the problem, which is the most important uh, issue in a research, okay? So we look at what is the, we start asking question, uh, what is the issue or problem? What controversy leads to the need of for this study? What concern is being addressed behind this study? Okay, and then uh, when we write it, we look at like the problem being addressed in this study is that. Uh, so we 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 we're supposed to have those kind of sentence in a research problem when you write. So locating research problem is very important. If you fail to locate, then you are going to collect data from wrong place. And you are identifying the issues are wrongly, and then your outcome would be affected. So your objective would not be met. Now, uh, determining whether the problem should be researched. Okay, so you will ask yourself a question: uh, whether that problem should be researched or not. So the first question would be: Can you study the problem? So to answer that question again, you have to ask yourself a more question: Do you have access to the research site? If the problem is happening in an industry where you don't have access, then you have a problem. Right? You cannot get the data. Do we have time, resources, and skills to carry out the research? Remember, if you're doing it, for IP, you are given only one year, two semester time. Time is very limited. 
and you do not want to spend money for it. Okay, so sometimes students come and see us uh, with brilliant ideas, but we tell them, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you won't be able to uh, do research on this topic because you may not have access to data. Uh, your time is very short, uh, time is not enough, or maybe the kind of skill you need, you don't have. For example, like many students used to come to see me and ask me, sir, can I do a research with you? I said, uh, what area do you want to do research? I said, uh, the student will tell me, basically, don't do research in management or marketing. I say that that's not my area. I, I prefer to supervise the students for accounting or finance. Okay, so the students will come and tell me, "Prof, I want to do research in finance." I said, "Do you really have skills in that? Are you really ready to, to do a research in finance?" Okay, so you may not have that skill to research to do research in finance. Uh, the next question would be: Should we study the problem? Should we study the problem? So to answer that, even you have to ask few questions: Does it advance the knowledge? Or does it continue to a practice? So either one of it must be there if it is C5P. If it is PhD, then both answers should be there. Okay. So in the A5P, uh, finally a project for undergraduate student, uh, we respect you to at least contribute to the practice. Uh, so your study at the end should have some kind of recommendation for the industry or the institute or society where the problem is rooted. Okay. So to determine whether a problem should be researched, uh, basically you will have this few question. In mind, you have to ask yourself and see whether you can. Um... Okay, uh, determining whether a problem should be researched. Okay, determining whether a problem should be researched. So, again, uh, you have a few more uh, questions. Uh, let's continue from earlier slide. Will you study uh, uh, to fill uh, a gap uh, or avoid in the existing literature? Will you study or replicate the past study but examine different participants and different research sites? Will you study to extend past research to examine the topic more thoroughly? You know, so these kind of questions should be, should be always there. So you have to keep on asking your you know, question to yourself and see whether a problem should be discussed. Now, uh, after that, you have to continue to identify your audience, uh, asking basically the question of who will profit from uh, reading this study or reading our study, okay? So is it for other researchers? Is it for practitioners, policy makers, or special population like parents or for family or educated uh, different groups and different uh, group of employees and all that? So you have to also, after identifying the location, you have to identify the audience because when you are writing, uh, you will have a lot of impact on your writing because you know what kind of audience you will have. So this is how a research study will flow. Huh? So your general topic, if you look at the title, is very general. And then uh, when we narrow it down to research problem, uh, we narrow it down a bit. And then we narrow it down a more bit. It becomes your proper system. And then finally, we become very specific. That becomes your research question. Okay? As I said earlier, this problem would be converted into a few specific research questions. Okay? So once you answer those questions, your research problem should be solved. Answer uh, research problem should be there. Okay. Uh, I've given an example like topic if it's distance learning topic, the research problem would be lack of students in the distance classes. Uh, the purpose is to study why students do not attend distance education classes. And this question is very specific. Okay, does the use of weight technology in the classroom deter students from enrolling into distance education class? So we're starting with very simple general topic, distance learning, and we end up with very specific research question. Okay, so all of you will do that. Uh, once you have identified research problem from there, uh, we'll go to specific uh, and very uh, specific and direct research questions. Now, how do you get started? Uh, when you have a topic and you started reading papers and you still uh, find it difficult to um, you study your research. So where do you get started? So how do we get started? So that question will be always there. So you should be getting started with a few questions like who, what, where, when, and why. Uh, these are the great tools for you uh, to find out the relevant pertinent information for discussion. Uh, so we is basically you are identifying who does the problem affect, right? Specific group, organization, or customer. And you will have a lot of bearings later. Okay, what, uh, what are the boundaries of the problem? Organization workflow, geographical customer segment, and what is the issue? What is the impact of the issue? So you continue asking question and question. 
to be research uh, is not that simple. Uh, we got to be really very inquisitive. Uh, we have to keep asking questions and questions, all right? Uh, and uh, that makes you inquisitive and that gives you uh, the kind of opportunity to uh, collect more information and data for your research. Uh, when, uh, when does the issue occur and when does it need to be fixed? Uh, basically, uh, these all questions are normal questions for a doctor when you go and meet the doctor. If you are not healthy and uh, you want to see a doctor, uh, the doctor will ask a question like that, you know, where, where, what, why, and also questions in there. Why basically he wants to understand what is the problem. So the research, when you want to define a research problem and start with the work, he will keep asking questions of when, what, why, and where, and all sorts of questions. That will give you some kind of answers that will let you start with the right up. Okay? So this question basically will help you zero in on the specific issues and frame the issue statement. All right, so your research problem uh, should be solvable. That is, it should take a reasonable amount of time to formulate, try, and deploy a potential solution. Now, uh, this is very common when you start doing research now. I think you are a little V6, and uh, many of you may not have started at all. Uh, some of you may have read few papers and uh, uh, possibly started, I think, a bit. But I think most of you are a bit situation, all right? Uh, I am not sure what to do. <laughs> uh, so I think that's why you are going to start on the because so as we start following up uh, only week six or seven, right? And then uh, time goes by, you know that by this uh, semester you have to complete chapter one, two, and three, and possibly you have to have a dark question with you. So if you haven't done anything, uh, this is the kind of situation you are going to have. You are going to be stressed up, okay? So those of you have started and uh, already given uh, chapter two to your supervisor, you, you have done a very good job. If you have not done it. Uh, it is already late for you to start, but uh, it will never, never. It should start as soon as possible. Okay, so this kind of situation will be there, and um, in order to overcome, we do have some suggestions for you, right? I'll, I'll give you certain suggestions like you should start asking questions of when, uh, who, what, and where, and all those sort of questions. Now, in this is uh, the intro. You start with the state of knowledge, find your research and the problem, and you end up with the state of knowledge, following your research and new questions. Huh? This is very important. Many of us, we feel that once I have completed our research, I have complete answers of the question, but may not be true. Huh? Once you solve a problem, you may raise more questions, and that is the best research, actually. So you look at uh, the current knowledge, and then you do a research and you solve a problem, and when you have a solution, you are raising more questions. All right? uh, that's what happens uh, with uh, COVID uh, and all that. Huh? Uh, basically, uh, there are many um, uh, uh, COVID there before Spanish flu and all that, and we had uh, uh, vaccination for it. But those people have done research, uh, there is a question there, you know, if, if something comes more adverse, like what is we are having now with COVID-19, it is uh, taking so long uh, mutation. No, sorry, yes. for yes. sorry for, in for interrupting. Uh, uh, students' comments are uh, opening complete. They cannot hear your voice clearly. Can you hear me? Can you hear I me? think because of the internet connection, is that possible for us to restart so that we have a uh, more stable internet connection? Okay. Uh, I think my internet no. should be really Internet is okay from our side. Maybe the, uh, the student side may have some problem. So, we can clearly listen the everything. Yeah. I think the internet should be a problem. It should not be a problem because I'm using Wi-Fi. It is very clear. There should not be a problem. I have seen uh, some messages in my handphone also. Students send me uh, some uh, uh, messages whereby they say they cannot hear. But uh, for international participants, no one actually complains. Um, uh, the students, I'm not sure, I think not everyone, uh, that's a few messages I see, they cannot hear me properly. Um, uh, I see very few, you know. Uh, I think the students are having problem with their internet, uh, because my internet is very stable here. Because I'm using uh, Wi-Fi and I think it now again is very clear. There should not be any problem. Shall I continue? Uh, the student having a problem with internet, I can't do much, right? We cannot help. 
Okay, Prof. You may so proceed. I, I continue. Okay, I continue. From the student side, their internet is not okay. So okay. you may proceed. Uh, Sorry for interrupting. So, guys, for implementing a research problem, uh, how do you make sure that your research problem is good? The first question that we have to pose to ourselves is problem should be researchable. Research problem should be researchable. Sometimes it still comes to the problem uh, or ideas of research. We know that, that that problem is not researchable. Okay. Um, whether that problem is important. Uh, we see problems are there, but whether it is important or not. Uh, uh, it's very common during uh, uh, the final Bible versus session or presentation, we ask the student why he wanted to do a research on it. And then the student will say, because this is happening. So we'll ask the student, uh, is it important? Something is going on, right? Earlier, the example I've given you on harassment in the industry, uh, you have to see whether that kind of harassment is affecting the performance or not. If it's not performing, affecting the performance at all, then probably uh, a, a research is not needed. Probably just an investigation and a uh, little bit of clarification of certain things will solve that problem, OK? Uh, research is not really needed. A good problem will also indicate uh, what kind of research you are going to do, right? A qualitative, quantitative, or it's going to be uh, a reporting kind of research design, or descriptive kind of research design, or experimental, or exploratory research design, you know, those kind of things should be indicated by problem itself. A research problem should specify the popul uh, population being investigated. Uh, so you are talking about locating the research and finding out the audience, right? Which are very important also. The problem should also specify the variable. So issues should be clearly identified. Each issue will become an independent variable. So a research problem will clearly identify the variables issues. All right. So that also answers the question of how do I write research problem. When you are writing research problem, you should start with dependent variable. That is the nucleus of uh, research. That's the problem. And followed by independent variable, those are the issues. So that should be closed down. Huh? So if you are moderating, then mediating it follows through now when you're defining problem it could be difficult it could be easy uh, research problem could be easily defined if situation is routine or certainly a dramatic change of it a systems are identified you know isolated can be identified easily or the symptoms are consistent so if you have that kind of situation you go to your doctor even doctor will just talk to you for a few minutes he will give you the medicine okay but a research question will be difficult to be defined if situation uh, appears totally new, changes are very subtle, symptoms are scattered, and symptoms are ambiguous. So if you have that kind of uh, situation, even you go and see a doctor, a doctor may have to do certain diagnostic, blood tests, urine tests, and all that, you know, for CT scan to identify. So if you have that kind of problem in hand to do research, we may have to do uh, some kind of very uh, in depth study to understand the research problem. Now, uh, sources of research problem are basically three. Um, it comes from knowledge of theoretical gap. It comes from uh, practical contextual issues, and it may also come from methodological issues. Now, let me show you how the gaps are identified in the knowledge. Uh, possibly a theory is there, but the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the theory is not tested. So we may undertake a research to test the effectiveness of a theory, OK? Uh, we may uh, uh, want to test a theory or want to nullify a theory, you know? Uh, there are theories there, but we know for sure this theory is not applicable to certain contexts. Huh? I always give example of famous economic theory called it one price theory, um, whereby we argue that price of a commodity should be same at a different place at the same time. So we can test that, and we can Nullify that the theory is not applicable. Okay, even we have arbitrage theory. Uh, we do look at those in finance, right? Uh, we may have situation whereby we see a theory is there, but that theory is not enough, you know, to solve the problem. So we can do research and we can propose some modification with the theory. We can even extend the theory. We see a theory is not enough, modification also not enough. So we need extension of a theory. So we add new variable to a theory. That can be also done. And you see the uh, theories are there, but one theory is not enough to solve the research problem in hand. So what we do, we may integrate few theories together to solve the problem in hand. And even we may validate the theory. So we collect data and with the statistical uh, robustness and analysis and all that, we may 
validated uh, theory. has been tested for you know, effective in Australia and some other countries, but it's not been validated in the case of Malaysia, say, for example, in the manufacturing industry or service industry. So you have to conduct research to validate the theory in the context of Malaysia. You may even verify a theory. Some theories, uh, all theories are basically based on hypotheses and assumptions. So we may want to do a study to see whether that theory is true. Is it true? You know what the theory is propagating. So we may want to do a research and do that. So literature gap or knowledge gap or theoretical gap could be identified based on these criteria. When it comes to methodological issues, possibly we may have identified that uh, those people have been uh, adopting different kind of methodologies. Those are not really appropriate. And uh, new methodology is expected. Then you can do a research and come up with a new methodology. Uh, you may have seen the new methodology has been proposed but not being tested in a different context. So you can even do a research and propose a new uh, test, uh, uh, the proposed methodology in a new context. Uh, you may have seen uh, uh, in our reading papers, uh, understood that uh, research previously done, uh, they use quantitative analysis or qualitative analysis, and you feel that these two uh, uh, separately uh, cannot really help you. So what do you do? You integrate. So it may be uh, you, you propose a mixed method, qualitative and quantitative. But you may even go for triangulation, qualitative, quantitative, followed by qualitative. Okay, You may even go for triangulations. Okay? Uh, even we can develop new instruments. Say, for example, a question has been developed and been used and tested in different industries, different countries, and we feel that that items being developed, instrument developed, is not really good. So we can propose new instruments uh, uh, for research. Okay, and also we may validate an instrument. Instrument being tested and uh, proposed and tested in different countries or different industry may not have been tested in the context of Malaysia or the industry that we talk about. So possibly, uh, we may want to validate the instruments in the new context, OK? Um, I see that the students are, are complaining still on the, the, they cannot hear me. I'm not sure what is wrong. Uh, because I have been doing a webinar many, many times, and never got complained. Uh, Brother Maruf, is it clear? Can you hear me? Is there a problem with light? Uh, is there really a problem, uh, uh, Brother Maruf, on, uh, on our side? Uh, I, I don't think uh, there's any serious problem because, as I check, uh, on the chat box, I think many students are complaining. Uh, I can hear a voice prof. Uh, me uh, also can uh, hear me too. Big problem, uh, I think. I'm not sure. Because, uh, but it's okay, I think, right now. Okay. So. I think it, it never had this, I never get no screen. I have taken out, don't worry, I'm going to show you the screen. Just want to check uh, the screen was frozen, okay. Share the screen again. All right, uh, so this was the methodological issues. And then finally, the third one is uh, the practical issues uh, or industrial issues or contextual issues, okay. So there are new issues arises. Uh, there are many new issues arise in the society now due to COVID, right? The many, right? Uh, so many things are changing, uh, and uh, it requires a lot of research to be done. Eh? Now, even uh, the drive-through uh, increasing. If you order food from different uh, one with the food panda, or that is there. Uh, even uh, we do have uh, uh, clinics and hospital. They give you drive-through medicine and drive-through testing. So many things are coming new. Eh? So new issues are arising uh, that requires the immediate uh, solution and um, uh, investigation and problem. When changes of policy is required, we do have policy, but that policy is not somehow uh, helping uh, to solve the problem. So we have to change the policy. So we may do research to come up with the new policies. Okay? We may adopt or adapt policies from other industrial countries. Uh, you can see that the policies there are not adapted or sufficient, so we may adopt or adapt it. Uh, this is very important. I think the mindset is uh, beautiful. Uh, with COVID now, everything is uh, and with uh, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Uh, uh, we have to change our mindsets. Everything is getting you know, uh, high tech, thing, you know, so we have to change our mindsets. Uh, we have to get used to uh, uh, what is happening and we have to update with uh, uh, what is happening, right? Uh, so changing the way we live, changing the way we work, uh, changing the way we conduct classes, we deliver products and services, all is going to be changed. 
So we may need to do research to propose certain policy to change the mindsets of the people. Okay. And uh, when you see a problem in the office, the problem was there and it was solved, and now again you see problem in the again. So in that case, possibly uh, we have to do a new research uh, to solve that problem. Okay. Now, uh, those of you, I think possibly if you cannot hear me, uh, can you please uh, go out and come in again? I think I will be clear, inshallah. So you can leave the session and you come back again. Right now, identifying and defining this problem. So there are many uh, ways of identifying this problem and uh, identifying this problem. Uh, one would be consulting with experts. So this is one way you consult with people. Uh, uh, okay, so you consult with experts and uh, we get ideas on it. Uh, number two. Personal experiences as you go through the problem. If you're working in an organization, you know certain problems are there. And based on experience, we can identify the idea, right? Practical experiences that we have. Uh, look at critical review of literature is very common. Uh, we can look at the folklore. Huh? We look at the society. Uh, look at the industry. Look at the institute. Look at the people. The way they work, the way they talk, the way they do things, you know, the customs, the beliefs, the religion, and uh, the languages, and all that. From there, we can find out some problems, and definitely that problem can be taken uh, into research. Brainstorming, uh, I think it's understandable. I don't explain that. Previous research is also understandable. Existing theory is understandable. Social issues. So I'm giving you many uh, uh, sources where actually you can look into, ponder into, identify, and define research problems. Okay, and then finally you expose to the field situation. Now, how do you uh, define a research problem easily? So we propose certain steps for you to uh, come uh, define the research problem. But then, while you are looking at these steps, uh, please make sure you look at the left and right side I put. Huh? You have to observe the environment. You have to be curious. You have to be inquisitive. As first uh, stage, what you do, or step what you do, you outline the areas of interest. So say, for example, if you are doing research in management, there's so many different areas in management, which one I want to undertake. Is human resource management that we have to identify. Even under human resource management, there are many areas we have to identify, right? Outline the areas of research. Then from there, you choose a topic. And from there, you narrow down your topic. And uh, from there, you identify the research problem. And then you identify the purpose of the study or business questions of this study, okay? So these are the five steps uh, that we have basically to identify and define a research problem correctly. Now, the process of uh, problem definition. Um, so basically, we start with uh, key symptoms that we see. First, we see a symptom. From there, we continue to isolate the symptom, you know, the problem from the problem. And then we write mental statement that is a research question or research objectives, right? We determine the need of analysis. The unit of analysis is the unit that you are going to analyze, where the data is going to come from. If it is employee, then employee is the unit of analysis. If it is organization, the organization is the unit of analysis, where you will collect the data. And also, you will collect the theories, OK, from the unit of analysis you identify. And then we continue to determine the relevant variables, the independent, dependent, uh, moderating, mediating, whatever. Those variables you have to identify, right? and followed by your research question and you transform research questions into research hypothesis. Uh, okay, the unit of analysis, that's what I was saying, it's very important. Uh, uh, often we ask questions of the students, what is the unit of analysis that they cannot really answer the simple question, okay? So the unit of analysis is where your data come from, the unit that you analyze. So it could be individuals like customer and employee if your data come from them. It could be household if the data coming from the house right, or from family. It could be an organization if your data is coming from the organization. Uh, it could be your department, you know, sales, uh, finance, human resource, uh, you know, uh, marketing. You could have, if your data problem is in the department and data comes from the department, then your internal analysis department and so on. It could be geographical areas, it could be even objects. Okay, so in a uh, certain research, there are multi-level analysis also there. So you may have to use two different kind of unit of analysis in case your thesis is based on multi-level analysis. Now, uh, this is very important. Huh? If you are 
uh, your business problem is coming from individuals, and individuals are your independent license, then make sure when you choose the theory, you choose individual level theory. Okay? If your problem is affecting the organization and the data is coming from organization, then your theory should be organization level theory. Now, next question will be, student will ask me, how do I identify whether uh, this is an individual level theory or organization level theory? Uh, in that case, what you have to do, you have to really go into deeper of the theories. All theories are proposed based on certain assumptions. So you have to look at assumptions. So from those assumptions, if you look at, you can easily identify whether this theory is an individual level theory or this theory is an organization level theory. Okay. Uh, this part I have to leave for next lectures, all right? So you will have uh, a lecture on theoretical framework where we will talk about uh, variables and, and hypothesis all that. Now, uh, this is very important uh, because uh, when we have a research problem, we identify and define, then we have to be very um, proficient in transforming research objective or research problem into research questions. So we have one research problem. And then you identify two research questions. So relationship between issues and problem become your research question. So if you have five issues and research problem, or five independent variable research problem is the dependent variable, then you will have five research questions. All right. Um, now the world is changing, right? The world is changing with information overload, technological connectivity, shifting the global economy. A critical scrutiny of business, government interventions, uh, battle for analytical talents. Uh, we have competing power and speed is now increasing and new research practice. So this all uh, basically six, uh, seven dimensions are giving us a new research perspectives. Okay. Um, I did not put the slide for you here. Uh, there was a beautiful slide. I forgot. Uh, it's about Nokia. I know in 2007, the first magazine has uh, run a report, you know, giving the cover story about Nokia. And they say they are the king in the market, forgetting that uh, this, this king may not continue as a king. Uh, you know, so a smartphone uh, coming and they, they failed to notice it. So after a few years, Nokia was, uh, you know, two degrees out from the market. So if you are doing a research now, without realizing the changes happening in the society or industry, that when you complete your research, your research is going to be very outdated, okay? So this part I won't explain, uh, I'll leave it for your own reading, okay? Now, this is something very important uh, to understand. Uh, with social media and uh, with the kind of technology advancement we have, things become very easy, you know, for even researchers. A company wanted to uh, produce uh, sources for dogs, okay? And what they did, they just invited 30 dog lovers through the Facebook, okay? And they have asked few questions to them. And within six weeks, the product was in the market. And they get used market share in the market, okay? So with the latest technology uh, that we have, uh, with Internet of Things, uh, many other technology available, cloud computing, all that, things have become very easy, okay? So this is the flow of ideas that goes on. So you have a topic. For me, topic is really some bit, you know, general, and there we proceed to research problem where the questions are concerns and problem and troubles identified. Then we continue to justify the problem. Then we look at the definite deficiencies in the evidence, right? That's why I said you find the literature gap, and then you have to find some evidence from the industry where the problem is rooted. And then only you will look at uh, your discussion uh, relating it to the audiences, right? As I said earlier. When you start defining research problem, you have to locate the problem, and then after that, you have to identify the audiences for your reading, right? So these are a few examples I've given you. How should you be writing a research problem? Okay? So I've given you the topic, and then I've written a research problem for you. The slide will be available in my YouTube channel just uh, beneath of the video after this session. Uh, you can uh, download it, and uh, you can read it. How? This is written, okay? So I have given clear guideline on how to write a research problem. Okay, so we start with the purpose, and this is uh, the three research questions you can see. So your problem is identified was, uh, for example, uh, online education, and then from there we have three sub-questions, uh, basically translating the research problem into research questions. 
Now, this is uh, another framework of how should you describe a research problem, Visa 2008. And uh, Visa has basically presented from content theme, knowledge type, and analysis level. So your research problem can be coming from all three or either one of these three levels. Okay? Now, uh, this is something also new thing that I come up for you. Um, plotting a research problem into a template okay, to make your to make your life easier. Uh, say, for example, this is uh, a title of research. Effect of human resource management, okay, factors on the organization performance of garbage industry, work safety as a moderator, okay? So you have to always remember, looking at the title, your dependent variable here is the organization performance. So dependent variable become the main problem. Huh? Please remember. So, if you are doing a research on it, and if, if I ask you what is your research problem, if you tell me human resource management, that it is wrong. Even this is student where I will ask him, what is your research problem? He said, human resource management. I say, no, what is your research problem? Human resource management. <laughs> so, this is very common. Huh? So, your dependent variable is the research problem. Dependent variable is the research problem. And you have to have literature gap identified, and you have to have some data from the industry to establish the problem that you have. Okay, so I'm putting a plot for you, proposing a plot for you where you can plot the research problem and then you identify the issues. So here the sub problem is human resource management and under that he has four issues, recruitment and selection, training and development, performance appraisal, rewards and benefits. So you have four issues there. So those four issues become four independent variables. Okay, those four issues are four independent variables. And here's a moderating variable that is the sub problem number two. So he's arguing that workplace safety will help improving, you know, the relationship between independent and dependent. That's why he has that. But he got no methodological issues, but he has also identified some practical issues. So you are looking at four issues here. You look at labor unrest, no dissatisfaction, labor strike, vandalism, employee turnover. So this is what you can do. You can plot your research problem into this template, and uh, that will make it very easy for you to understand. This is another example. This is a real page thesis uh, completed by one of our students from PPA. Uh, his title was Financial Risk, Business Risk, and Farm Value. Looking at the title, you know farm value is dependent variable. So his main problem is the farm value. So for him, he has identified that in his country, the farm value has been declining. Okay, So the earnings and profitability has been declining and that affects the farm value. So that's the main problem. What is causing the problem? He has identified issues, credit risks, liquidity risks, operational risks, audience risks, and all that. So all issues that he has identified become independent variable. And how did he identify all those issues? Through literature review, okay, through literature review. So the problem, the main problem is identified through literature as well from the industry. But issues are basically identified through literature review with the support of theories, okay? And then uh, this student has contextual problem also he has identified. You can see basically his contextual problem is poor management of risks. And here he is looking at other issues, high not performing loans, weak liquidity and management, high level of fraud and weak internal control system and inequity in capital, right? So this student has identified from the literature and knowledge the main problem and the issues there. So he has identified all those independent, independent variables. And he has supported with the industry data here. Okay, so if you plot your issues and problem into this template, then it will be crystal clear to you how many variables can you take. All right, because when you do literature review, you, you will find number of variables being identified and studied. So some cases even you can find uh, 15, 20 variables being identified as independent variables. So which one should you choose? If you have that kind of question, then you have to always go back to the issues that is affecting the industry that you have chosen for research, okay? So from those 15 or 20, you will only pick up three or four or five as independent variable. But if you want to take the moderating, mediating, you take one there, okay? Then you plot it here, and then you will have also support here. And you can see here, my student has written basically a uh, definition of these issues. Uh, that uh, basically uh, uh, help him define the issues into uh, a research problem, okay? So this uh, template will be available for you uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the YouTube channel and you can 
uh, download it and you can plot your research problem and then you convert into issues okay so uh, that's what i have it for uh, sharing with you uh, since it is uh, an introduction uh, for for the student i do not want to make it uh, very long uh, now basically uh, we will move into question and answer session so i will stop sharing and then uh, we we go to question and answer session those of you who have questions actually you can uh, ask question by putting the questions on the uh, uh, box or now we give you the link uh, those of you who would like to come live uh, you can follow the link and come live so you can join me and uh, dr nista together on the screen uh, brother maruf can you show the screen uh, sharing the link uh, for them to join i'm not sure where where is student uh, why is student cannot hear i'm, I'm very uh, confused today uh, usually student uh, participant has never complain on whether they can hear or not you know uh, but today it seems um, uh many uh, student um complain uh, many student complain not sure why <laughs> never happened before okay you can follow this link uh, the link is there on the screen uh, if any one of you interested to uh, join our uh, live you can actually come now on live you can follow the link and you can come live uh, not sure whether you are interested to come live uh dr nisha is there any uh, question on the screen uh, from participants really uh, so far from no question from the you have, to on, you have to unmute your microphone uh okay prof can you hear me okay you have unmute but it's still okay uh, okay uh can you hear me prof yes 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 okay uh so far no question Okay, dear all participants, you may ask question to the prof. To prof. Uh, you can add up, uh, put the question on the screen. Yeah, you can put the question on the screen. You can ask prof now, or you may you may text your question. You may type your question. Uh, I'm not sure because uh, students seems to be, uh, you know, they they couldn't really uh, hear many many, not many, but there are students who couldn't really hear uh, my voice. Open to all participants. If you have any question, you can you may ask now. Um, okay. Um, you can actually join us live if you want to ask question. Uh, this is the screen. Uh, I'm giving you the link. Uh, you, you can join us actually live. And, uh, if you have question, and you can ask question. I'm not very sure whether you are properly uh, dressed <laughs> to come live. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, well uh um, if you don't have any question um uh, uh, personally first time you are attending the uh, the webinar youtube live uh, this video is going to be saved in my youtube channel okay uh, those of you who have not subscribed to this youtube channel as you are live on the session you have a subscribe button there uh, please just press on uh, th click on subscribe and you will subscribe the channel so later you can come and view it okay um uh, Uh, brother maru can you run our link of our youtube channel so okay you will share it there if you really can you unmute your microphone then you can talk to us unmute your microphone if you sure if is unmute your microphone unmute your microphone your microphone is okay okay and i feel unmute 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 this me audio by the phone okay has got out <laughs> uh, okay um uh, this, this youtube channel i think you are very familiar with now um, there are many videos on this methodology is available for you uh, this is problem is there systematic literature review is there 
uh, theory of more video is available there. Sampling the uh, uh, video also available there. And also how you would like to uh, present your slides. Those videos are also available for you there. So if most of you could not uh, really hear me properly, uh, then you have to go to YouTube channel and uh, listen to it, OK? Uh, we are really sorry in case uh, if you couldn't really uh, hear me properly. Uh, but so far, this is the first time I get complaint for participating that you are here. Uh, we never had that kind of problem before in the live session. But again, technology could be, you know, always like that. Sometimes we unexpected things can happen. Uh, so uh, we apologize for that in case there was any inconvenience caused. Uh, then we will uh, strongly advise you. Uh, go to my YouTube channel and then uh, you listen to the video. Okay, uh, Lena is there online. Can you unmute your microphone, Lena? Lena, can you unmute your microphone? Please click on the mute. Click on the mute. Hi, Lena. Can you click on the mute? Unmute it. Can now we can hear you? Uh, okay, Lena, we can hear you now. We can ask the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any question, Lina? Uh, okay, Lina, we can hear you now. We can ask the question. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we can hear you. Please, please continue. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can hear you. Please, please continue. Continue, Lina. You can ask question. It's fine. We can hear you. Please. Continue, Lena. You can ask questions. It's fine. We can hear you, please. Okay, we cannot hear Lena now. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what is the problem today. Uh, it may have been like that before. Uh, I'm not sure what is the problem today. Uh, it may have been like that. Okay, I think in that case, uh, since we cannot really hear you and uh, we have problem with online uh, somehow today, uh, but uh, the video is ready. It is already there. Okay, so if you if you couldn't really listen to what we have said or presented, uh, please go to my YouTube channel. Uh, basically, it is done at the beginning. You can see it now. Uh, a platform for research and development. You can just go to. Uh, YouTube and type platform for research and development, and then you will see with ERD uh, uh, logo uh, the platform for research and development. There, you can just go in and then you can listen to the video. You can even download it, you can download it, and you can listen, uh, or you can listen on uh, online also. Okay, and uh, I would definitely recommend you to subscribe the channel so that you can be always updated with the latest videos. Now, I'm past the Okay, thank you very much, Prof, for giving such an insightful and informative lecture today. I like your analogy, tree analogy. If there is no root, no tree. If there is no research problem, so no research. I really like it, Prof. Uh, on behalf of the organizer, uh, we are so sorry for the technical problem. Uh, due to unstable internet connection. Uh, hopefully, uh, this session, hopefully this insight sharing session will be beneficial for everyone. Uh, before we end uh, our session, I would like to recite a poem, but in Bahasa. Tidur tak lena hati gundah ligat memikir Tajuk kajian. Harusnya kita faham masalah. Itulah separuh dari kejayaan. As of now, we come to the end of this session. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much to all uh, participants. Thank you very much for your participation. Hope to see you again. Uh, so that's all for today. Uh, we will end the session. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.